In today's video, we're gonna react to some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Have you heard the theory that that the Great Wall of China, that actually facing the wrong way, the wrong way. So like the <laughs> holes that they shoot arrows out of is facing towards China. It's Weird. suspected that another nation empire built the wall, and they're saying that it could have possibly been Tartaria. You want to talk about the Chicago World Fair? But it was a hidden secret civilization. They say because in like Tartaria. Basically. In yeah. Chicago? Yeah, they're yeah, saying they're the, the same influence what was Tartarian architecture and stuff. Really? It looked to... like ancient Rome, basically. It in was Chicago. Crazy. And they built it apparently and they tore it down after the World's Fair. The World State Fair. Look no at what so they said that they World built Fair. it for the World Fair, but then after they just tore it all down. And it's like that doesn't sound Why would you do right? that? It's absolutely beautiful. Like yeah. well, we just skipped all those years and they just you know, we they rewrote the year of history that it was, mm -hmm. and so we actually are living in right now the what do they say now? It's, it's, it's like the 1500s. We're or something, now, yeah, right? it's crazy. yeah. It would be so easy to just start over, because back then, like now, would be difficult because they have just the digital footprint that we have. Yeah, but it's like it would be so easy just to convince people, yeah, this just didn't happen. Like, oh, that was a, that was totally made up. But you guys heard about that happen over there? No, that didn't happen. Yeah, like it's it'd be so easy just to. It's just, that whole Mandela effect thing. Yeah. I am interested in Tartaria and to see a little bit more about it. I think I'm going to start pulling up some more of those types of videos soon. If that's something that you are interested in, because I am personally kind of interested in it. There is some pretty good evidence out there that there was something. So let me know in the comments if this is something you're interested in me doing a deep dive in. Hey, people that sleep with the air conditioning fan on, I got a question. What planet are y'all from? What planet are we from? <laughs> We're from the planet that gets sleep. I don't think you guys understand. The people who have the AC on while they sleep, they don't want the AC on. They need the AC on if they want to get any kind of sleep at all. Does that make sense? If we're for a good full night's sleep, or at least the best chance at it, they need the AC fan on. They want the ceiling fan on. They want the standing fan on. We need the windows slightly cracked a little bit. And we want to be bundled up under the covers at the same time. Because it's not just the cool air from the fans. It's the sound. The sound of the fans while you're sleeping. It's very tranquil. It actually will help. And in regards to getting some sleep not only that right i heard very recently uh, the advice to to get a weighted blanket is it to turn on all the fans and everything uh, have the lights off and then get a weighted blanket and apparently it's supposed to be a great night's sleep i literally got the weighted blanket last night i missed three alarms in a meeting i just woke up now i'm not gonna lie to you that might be the move but yes no uh the fans on is like a it's like a necessary thing that's a non-negotiable thing if you're with somebody that has a fans on also, do not try to turn the fan off while they're sleeping because they will wake up immediately. Come here. That's like when your parent is asleep and you try to change the channel of the TV show they're watching. They're waking up immediately. I do enjoy a good fan in my room. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of things that I can do without. A fan being in my room is not one of them. I definitely like to have the ceiling fan, standing fan, and the window cracked like this individual said. And I do not like being covered up in blankets. And if anything, I like the thinnest part of my sheet. I like that as my blanket personally. Uh, as far as a weighted blanket goes, I am kind of interested in getting one. I've never used one, but I heard a lot of people really enjoy them. One, it helps me breathe better. I, I really like having my fan running because it circulates air in my room. Two, I really enjoy the noise that it produces because honestly, with complete silence at night, it's more difficult to sleep than the constant noise of a fan running. At least for me personally. If the eclipse is right here. Yeah. Then why is the moon over there? Oh, wait. Whoa. What? How does that happen? Because we're in the middle. If the, the but wait. look, the moon is oh. right there in front <laughs> of the sun. Wait. But the moon is over here. Why is the moon right there if it's supposed to be in front of the sun? Here, I'm using these right here. What is going on? Wild. That is, that's insane. Do you see that? Yeah. If the moon is right there in front of the sun, then why is it over there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google that. That can't be, or the flat earth, I don't know, or the flat earthers, right? <laughs> Maybe it is flat. It's huh. a conspiracy, dude. Why are there any zombies, man? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. I'm pretty certain this is probably a fake video, 
but I'm not 100% certain. I did not get to witness the eclipse with my own eyes. I was at work at the time, so I really didn't get to study the sky to see if the moon was elsewhere other than in front of the sun. So this is a pretty good video. I have a feeling it's fake. There was a, a difference between switching over from the day perspective of looking at the moon to covering the camera with the eclipse glasses. So it makes it really hard to tell if there's like cuts or splices into this video to see if it's fake. But I have a feeling it is. If it's not, then what was eclipsing the sun? That could have definitely been a different planet if that was the case. But again, not 100% sure if this is a real video. Let me know what you guys think about it. Y'all, I think I know what CERN was doing while this eclipse was happening. Do you see this? There is so many different videos and footage of demons flying by the sun. By the way, to all you vultures using people's videos without crediting them, stop it. This video belongs to this person. I'm about to show you another one in a minute. I'm going to slow it down right here. And then there was this one. Creator is again at the top. And there's so many more. And if y'all really don't want to act like demons don't exist, there was a rumor that CERN was haunted after their first time powering up. And then as of lately, they say they found a 4D ghost in the CERN particle accelerator. AKA, they found a demon, another entity above our dimension. For anybody saying it's a rocket, you are completely fooling yourself. You are fooling yourself. And here is that one going back and forth. Look at that. That is insane, y'all. So does anyone want to tell me what all these demons were doing? Maybe this is why they brought up the demon face thing on the news. I don't know. I had a video yesterday of that one going across the sky. And there was a couple of people that said that that was definitely a doctored video and it was not real. And it may very well be the case. One, I do not see the clouds dissipating when it goes through them. There's no streak. There's no trail. It just is an object that goes straight through them. Unless it's bending space and time and it doesn't get affected by the clouds and the clouds don't actually get affected by its movement, there was no movement going on in those clouds as far as seeing the clouds move along with the flying object. That doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't real, but that is a pretty good point to bring into consideration when it comes to this type of thing. Also, it could not have been a rocket because there was no smoke trail, there was no fuel trail leading from the rocket if that was the case. So it might be a video edit, but if it is, it's a really good one to me. I think that it looks pretty good if it's a video edit. Speaking of Mark Zuckerberg, do you hear about the house he's building in Hawaii? This huge parcel of land, and he's building this very secretive house. He's spending over $200 million on this project. Built walls all around this property so no one can see what he's doing. And everyone working on the site has to sign an NDA. <gasps> Like contractors, electricians, plumbers, all these people have to sign an NDA. Some of the plans for his mansion got leaked and he's building this giant underground. Basically, it's a mansion, but underneath it is a bigger mansion that the walls are made out of metal and concrete, blast doors. No. They, and they have their own underground room or whatever to where they can grow their own food. They have their own water supply. Basically, he's making it its own self-sufficient place. He's getting as far away from civilization as you possibly can be. But what's creepy is this guy in New Zealand who's a contractor who builds basically underground giant bunkers. He's had over 11 billionaires build bunkers in New Zealand. And it's a reoccurring theme where all these billionaires are like building bunkers and like, it's like, I think they might know something. They probably do know something more than what the average person does. I wouldn't doubt that higher up governments or higher up businesses give them a little bit more insight than what they do the normal people. I feel like if there was a catastrophe or something that was about to happen 10 years from now, these are the type of people that are going to know about it before anyone else. So they have time to prepare because they actually have the financial gain to help restart the economy after it's been completely wiped out. 
That's kind of what I think. That might not necessarily be the case. It's a theory for sure. But it does make me wonder. And I'm not going to lie. If I had millions of dollars, I too would love to build an underground bunker to live in, not just for protective purposes. Like I, that would be my home. I would have this tiny, normal looking house on the outside. And then once you go in it, it looks like an average house. But down under that bad boy is a massive bunker. I think that sounds awesome. But that's a pipe dream, you know? The scariest thing just happened to me and I'm freaking out. I was filming and this happened. What is that? And it started getting closer. Can someone tell me what this is? Well, that's just nightmare fuel is what that is. I'm sure that someone in a costume or something like that, like a Halloween costume, but that's terrifying. I would definitely not just be sitting there recording it if that was the case. I would either one, have to approach it, or two, run away screaming because that, pretty scary. <laughs> my luck, it would be one of my kids that are dressed up in a Halloween costume and I'd run up to it and kick it. That, that would just be not a good day. So don't do that to me. That's bad. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed, thank you so much for being a part of this channel. And for everyone that's not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for continuously watching my content. Don't forget, if you want to be a part of Question for DK, leave a comment down below starting with Question for DK that'll allow me to be able to find it through the YouTube search results. And I can answer all these questions that you have, whether it be conspiracy theories, theories in general, or personal information that's not too personal. I won't answer those. Wow, how about that eclipse, huh? That was beautiful. I have never seen anything like it. I really wish they warned us, though, to not look at it without any sort of protection. Because my eyes, I mean, they burn. I hope that this is a skit because his eyes look horrible. They look like he looked at arc welds for a while. I bet there was a lot of people out there, though, that really did look at the eclipse with no protection, and they probably really damaged their eyes, especially children, and that's really sad. I hope not, but I have a feeling a lot of children probably have damaged eyes now because of this eclipse, including adults. There's a facility out in the desert called Fort Huachuca. Army intelligence headquarters have been out there. And there's a deep underground military base that has uh, nine ET craft and autopsy bodies. I knew guys who worked in that. Nine? Facility. Nine different craft. And they're from different civilizations. So all these stereotypes of this, you know, it's like the big bug eyed thing. That's not what it is. That, that's just all the caricatures that, you know, media the idiots shit, put out. Yeah. Media, you know, the mass yes. media put yeah. out to sort of ridicule it. Even the mainstream media is admitting now these UFOs are real. Our military has been encountering them. How do you think they're communicating from, say, the Andromeda galaxy, which is two and a half million light years from here in Earth? The speed of your cell phone, that's two and a half million years to get a signal there, two and a half million years back. That's five million years round trip to the nearest galaxy to the Milky Way. It's too slow. So you're dealing with sciences and technologies that are interfacing with other fields of not only energy, but thought. So these civilizations think to their device and it does something. I knew they it. They think to their to their console and it and the spacecraft goes boing boing to one point to another. I would like to believe that be the case with extraterrestrial technology if that exists. I truly think that they have like an organic machine, one that's made out of living tissue basically, even if it's metal, it's living metal. I think that they have very sophisticated technology to the point where it's sentient technology that taps into their conscious and they can think to it and it'll, it does what they think. Uh, I really think that that would be the way it would work for these extraterrestrials. And it might not be sentient technology per se, but it is super advanced technology that links up to their conscious mind. I am a huge believer in that. I, if there is an extraterrestrial life out there, I, I really do believe that. What's your thoughts about this? And also, I have a sneaking suspicion that these individuals are not only psyops, but what if they are the extraterrestrial beings? What if they're a part of the government to 
fool us into thinking that they're humans and giving us false information about alien technology because these are actually aliens that are talking about this technology to give us a fake what aliens are actually like. And in truth, aliens are people in power, like governmental officials, people that like to control war, things like that. What if those people are actually different species of aliens and they just like fighting with each other and us as the humans are their pawns in their laughing game because they utilize us and that just makes them happy because they get to watch us. Pretty interesting theory. Look at her throat. Almost two lumps. Now watch this. See the two, two lumps? Yeah. Two lumps. Now wait, watch this. Doesn't she look weird? Already? There are people. She's fucking straight up. Reptilian lizard. That's the real thing. Look at her throat. This is just crazy. That is a reptilian looking individual. The eyes for sure are very uncanny in a way. They almost don't look human, but they're human. And it's very odd to me as well. And I'm not trying to be mean to this person. I don't even know who this person is, but there is some suspicion there as they could just be a normal person that's suffering with certain deformities and probably doesn't really enjoy people calling them out on it. But in this case, have you heard of the moon eyed people? No. There's all these legends of across North America of these people with fair skin, light hair, and pale eyes. There's a Prince Maddock of Wales in 1170. There's a civil war breaking out and he had to sail like to get away. He didn't want to die by his brother's hand. He's like, I'm going to go explore. Goes to North America, lands in Mobile Bay, but is never seen again. Uh -oh. 500 years later, there's a missionary from Wales. His name is uh, Morgan Jones. He lands in South Carolina, starts doing missions work the natives capture him they tie him up he's about to be beheaded and then he notes he yells out he's like i have he's like i've escaped so many perils have i really escaped all of these just to die like a dog and that's when the chief comes out it's a dude the chief is a small pale skinned big light eyed light haired human who comes out walks up to him and says you shall not die today what's crazy is that he spoke perfect welsh they discovered a ton more settlements, a ton more structures. In Illinois, there's a uh, there's an establishment called Cahokia, six square mile city that once held 40,000 people. It literally had 80 mounds on this massive acreage. They're saying it's the biggest developed settlement north of the Aztecs from that time period. The way it was built matches how things were built in Wales. And so, oh, wow. And so they're literally like, but think about it. It's they uh -huh. dug under them and the teardrop foundation is literally the same foundation Dude. of their uh, fortifications for war that they were using in Wales from that same time period. This is a pretty interesting story. I do not know if it's true, but it is a really cool topic nonetheless. I'd like to do a little bit more learning on this. If any of you have any information on it, let me know in the comments because this is pretty cool. So you don't think anything happened crazy during the eclipse today? Well, are you sure you were paying attention? Because I captured something crazy. This is the sun. That's a lens flare. So you tell me what that is. It's not a lens flare. And I've been saying for a while that the sun we see is just a projection from the sun in the firmament. And not only did I catch it, but my friend Brandon Thomas, who has the Expanding Reality podcast, used a solar filter and not only caught one, but he caught two. And you guys might not be Bible believers, and that's okay, because I wasn't either, until I realized we didn't live on a globe. But if you look at what the Bible says, it talks about the sun being in the firmament. And not only that, but there being layers of the firmament. So if the sun was in the firmament, maybe we are seeing the reflections in the different layers of the firmament, where usually 
we just see the projection right here. And usually we can never see that reflection because the sun is so bright that it washes everything out. But when it's partially eclipsed, as seen by the lens flare, we see. And if you're an intellectually honest person and you see things like this that don't make sense in the heliocentric model, you really need to ask yourself, do I continue to believe what I've always believed or should I seek truth? Truth that might just set you free and let you know that we're in a place that was created just for us. And the beautiful thing is, the choice is yours. You can stay in your beliefs because it's comfortable. It's comfy. It's a cozy little blanket. Or you can take the hard road and seek truth and true knowledge. But as always, this is just my opinion. You know I'm just a satire count purely for entertainment purposes. And I have to give credit where credit is due. David Weiss, the man, the man who created this app, was the first person to ever show me that the sun we see might just be a projection from the source inside the firmament. So go download his app. It's a wealth of information involving Flat Earth. Um, use my code FITFLAT when you sign up. And have a good day. I don't know. I'm really sad that I wasn't a part of the eclipse to actually get to witness some of this stuff. To me, that looked like lens flares. Even the small, solid-looking planets looked like a lens flare to me. It looked like a duplicate lens flare, and my phone does the same thing. I have an iPhone that has three cameras on it and a screen protector for the cameras, and any light that hits this, it will make an after image three times because it's picking it up off of each lens. So it just makes me wonder if maybe he didn't see the moon in the eclipse and it was just reflecting it three times over. But the real question is that I would like to know and I would have liked to have seen is what was this individual using to capture the eclipse, to capture these other celestial bodies, if you will. I would like to know if it was a standard camera, was it a phone? Because knowing that can actually help determine whether it was lens flare or lens reflection, at least to me. But for me, I do think that those were lens reflections. I'm not necessarily certain if those were other planets or anything like that. Let me know what you guys think. But to me, I'm pretty certain that that was just lens flare. A problem that I did not anticipate about unmasking uh, but I'm starting to recognize is that when I talk to people that I trust and instead of talking to them as a normal person speaks only on normal, appropriate topics that everyone would accept, instead of doing that, I try to just be myself and talk about the things that I want to talk about with the exact level of emotional inflection that I actually have about that situation, which, spoiler alert, usually high, high amount of emotion. If I'm angry about something, I'm very, 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 very angry. And if I'm sad about something, I'm very, 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 very sad. If I'm happy, I'm very, very happy. You get the idea. So when I'm talking to people that I'm unmasked with now, now that I'm trying to really, really genuinely trying to unmask, I let myself be as genuinely emotional as I am. And do you know what happens? People treat me like I'm stupid. People who fucking love me, who a second ago told me that I was smart and responsible and confident and powerful and could do anything. And then I start talking with some emotion in my voice and they say something to me advice wise that makes it clear to me that when I speak with that level of emotion, their concept of my intelligence goes down. Unmasking is hard. I have recently learned about unmasking and what that means necessarily. It's kind of a form of letting yourself be you in front of people because normally people put up this not facade, but they put on this mask, if you will, that is a false perception of themselves like they might seem more sophisticated they might seem more emotional than normal things like that just to adapt with the public get what this individual is saying if you unmask in front of people that do not expect that type of personality there is a difference on how they treat you they will treat you as if you have less intelligence i'm glad that i am now more aware of masking and unmasking and being able to tell when there's someone masking in front of me or if i am masking in front of people 
because it is a good thing to be aware of because you don't need to mask yourself, especially around me. I'm 100% okay with you being yourself as long as you're not physically harming me with fists, guns, knives, or things like that. You can be whoever you are in front of me. I really do not care. And if I ever say anything that upsets you, please leave a comment down below letting me know because sometimes I really do not think about some of the things that I say. They're literally just things coming off the top of my head and it can come off extremely rude. And that's the unmasked portion of myself recording these. I try to keep a mask on while I record to keep a level of professionalism, I guess, but I also am myself for the most part and it does bleed through and I'm sorry about that. But to this lady here, I get it. it. It really does suck to think you're safe enough to unmask around someone and then they just treat you like you're an idiot, basically. Let me know what you guys think. Have you masked around people? Or are you just always unmasked? Do you not care what people say about you or what they think about you? If that's the case, awesome. And I think that's the way it needs to go. You know how if you tense your eardrums, it sounds like thunder? Like, I'll do it right now. It didn't look like I did anything. Apparently not everyone can do that. Can you do it? I can do that. I can make my ear, like right now as I'm speaking, I can make it vibrate in my eardrums and it's just really rumbly. It, I don't know. I'm glad there's other people that can do it. I brought this up a, a few videos ago, quite a few videos ago, and there was a lot of people that are like, yeah, I can actually do that too. So I guess I'm not the only one. I'm starting to see some videos come out about it as well. So it's kind of a cool trick that we can do. Welcome to the club. All right, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you are interested in any of the clips that we played today, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.